Did you guys hear about the ice hockey player who got straight like kung fu kicked in the neck? Yeah, he died. Isn't that fucked up? He died. Who kicked him? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> 1% of the ice hockey players responsible for 100% of on ice deaths. That's why I chose the word of the day to be ephemeral. You familiar with that one, y'all? I am now. Oh, what's it mean? But this page, for some reason, deleted itself, and it is referring to something that is short lived, transient, or fleeting, often lasting for only a brief period of time. Damn. Really? I thought it was the opposite. Much like us all. Oh, you thought it meant uh like, like everlasting. Eternal. Everlasting. Yeah. yeah. Sounds eternal. Like a gobstopper. Like Sounds. a gobstopper. <laughs> you know what I learned recently too, I'll have to do it at one point, but uh, you know they're always saying uh I perused the book. What does that mean? They didn't read it. You got it. <laughs> That's what people think. But oh. do you know peruse means read thoroughly and intently? Really? Wow, that's so funny. Did you know that? They're not I thought it meant like that Everybody's yeah. using the word wrong. Funny. It is to examine carefully and thoroughly. You got it, pal. You With learned something. With the intention of understanding. Yeah. Three. So there's like estimate. outlines of people there oh, that the AI that. is kind of building, I guess, from, if I understood Chris, correctly, the radio. If technology actually just progresses in 10 years, you're going to be talking to my robot pal. Da, 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 my robot pal. Da, Mitch, da, I'm pretty da, da. sure that exists. You just don't use them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure they have those. It's probably already yeah. my robot pal. Yeah. I'm like, hey, robot pal, can you help me spy on my neighbor with your Wi Fi interference system? And they're like, got you, bud. That's funny. You mean it's not the girl who says, what I found in my Burger King snack last week? <laughs> Fucking hate I hate that, that voice, voice, man. That's God, the worst it's voice. so fucking annoying. <laughs> Always do this one trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, one trick. this what I order at the drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> Looking cute on break. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> God, we're done for! <laughs> God! So this is a little bit of a prophecy. <laughs> Have you seen this? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, if I'm not mistaken, we're going up in money. There's a beautiful Twin Towers, then the $10 bills, they're on fire. The 20, they're really on fire. The 50, they're collapsed. And then on the 100, it's just ashes. Is that not insane? Yeah, they're falling down as the money gets bigger. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that I've, wild? I've never seen the chronology right same like bills. my friends always told me the 20 i think oh if you do the 20 it's the twin towers burning man i knew that one but i didn't know it was like all of them yeah and it's a story being told and it's kind of the the pictures are there yeah what can you say you're looking at it this is proof it's Sometimes, <laughs> Mitch, didn't you once correct Duolingo? You sent like a complaint saying <laughs> many, that many, <laughs> many times. <laughs> this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it was like, uh, it was a guy talking, and he says, and he says, your brother is hot, or something. I'd be like, oh, I think you guys made a mistake. Like, you're supposed right. to say your sister was hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just like the greatest scene where they're talking to PC principal, and they're like, Cartman has changed, wow. man. Don't you think he looks different? <laughs> and, then, and then PC principal's like, I don't see the problem with that. If you think Cartman can't be a black woman, then you got, you boys have got some growing up to do. Nice, that's fantastic. <laughs> there's a there's a good argument by this uh, black rapper, this English rapper named oh. Zuby. Oh, and Zuby, he, yes. Yeah, and he was talking about, it was a pretty hot take. He said how race and color is actually more of a spectrum than sexuality because you could take two different races, breed, and have like a mixed baby who's like yeah, of a version of both of them. It's a piece of both of the parents, but you can't create a non-binary offspring. You're just blinded and you think that your eyes are telling you. Zuby, you're you. so dumb. You don't even understand. The rule is, if you have a tiny bit of melanin, you could say... True. That's it. Well, that's what he said, that's too. That's the only rule. That's the only rule that exists. That's the only spectrum anybody needs. That's true. Do you have this much melanin? You could say... That's as far as race goes. That's what he said about Obama, too. He's just like, Obama's probably just as much, if not more, white than he is black, but yeah. he chooses the black. Yeah, you got it. It's whatever reasons. you choose. And then that's the, <laughs> that's the, uh, the choice, how whatever I'm feeling today. Yeah. Whenever it benefits you, of course, you, you bring out your white side when you're at a job interview or something like that. But when you're with your homies, you bring out the black side. You know, you have options. And you know what? 
You deserve it. As Patrice O'Neill said, that's your reparations. Go for it. Yep. That's true. You Just can say words. whatever you want. Just I words. can't. Look at that. Congrats. You win. Congrats. <laughs> Take a bow. Go ahead. Guys, it's time to start the show. Welcome to Ancient Wisdom. Remember to like and subscribe. And you know what? Comment. Comment six times. Comment seven times. It helps the algorithm. Where should they comment? Y'all should comment right here. Evan, you tricked me again. <laughs> Y'all know where to comment. I don't got to tell you. You're smart. You watch Ancient Wisdom. We're going to start off with a hot one. Because I don't know much in this world. And you guys got to educate me with some defiant definition. <laughs> Just fuck up our <laughs> It is heavy though, I'll tell you that much. That's some heavy eight oh eight. Yeah. Guys, I need you to I need you to teach me a few things. This is like uh this is more than a, a definition. This is more of a tale. This is more of a story, if you will. But uh over the course of the topic. But I wanna know what does it mean to be mature? What does it mean? Damn. That's what, deep. What does it mean? Everybody always talks about this word. You're immature. <clears throat> I'm more mature than you. I'm going to have some self-awareness not this time and not go right to the ending. Oh, I thank you, Evan. Wow. If it is That's indeed wisdom. if it is indeed the ending or the definition. But I think it's what we've been taught for sure uh, to I think it's almost an insult depending on the context. What Tell do you mean what we what we've been taught? Uh, it's the goal to be mature, you're saying. Yeah, the goal is to be mature. We're taught that mature is a good thing and yes. you're more adult and grown up and responsible. At least those are the synonyms I associate with mature. Those are good adjectives. I like it. And it could be used in a positive way or a condescending way, depending on the context in which you're using it. You're mature when you can realize your own mistakes, when mm. you can identify them and improve from them. If you can't see yourself, you're not mature. I agree with that, and I think the important thing to highlight about that definition is that it has to come from within. You have to say, oh, I messed up. I think that's when you're showing maturity, mm. but I think everyone uses it pointing out at the world, and that's mature, that's immature, that's mature. I like where you're going with this, <clears throat> because I got to say that's kind of my point. If you could just point your finger and shout mature, not mature, what does it really mean then? Right. Who is who is the arbiter of who maturity? Who is the arbiter of maturity? <laughs> Comment. I want to know who is it. Apparently, I need to meet them. apparently, it's the person who's using it. So you got fer- it, pal. Fervently is that the word? Yep. Nice. Fervently to everybody in their in their brother. You know, I could say much like all words uh, are they're made up, right? And I know I kind of use that argument a lot, but if this is not the most made up word used to control people, I don't know what is. You're immature. I'm so much more mature than you. That's saying I should not learn from you. You should be learning from me. I am the mature one. I am by definition the arbiter because I said mature. You might as well just call that person a piece of crap if you're calling them immature. You're immature. I'm, I'm beyond you. You know, I'm like better than you. I got. To, I'm the one who judges around here. Damn. It means you're in charge. That's immediate, what it means. Immediate establishing of hierarchy. Exactly. And when we're yeah. talking about sexual relationships, you know, uh, male, female, who's the mature one? That's the one who's in charge. I need a man who's more mature. You know. You're not mature enough. As it, again, yeah, as if they have the authority. That's so insulting. That's awful. Yeah. What a what a controlling way to put someone in line if they don't see the trick. Yeah. Being played. It's just it's just this another way that everybody has to be so smart nowadays. Everybody has to make up these words. And if you have a, a mature, it's these buzzwords that we're surrounded by. I could say, and I automatically win. Like. Like my favorite one I heard this week. What is it? I think I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. This woman talking. You know, the goal is not to be independent. The goal is not to be codependent. Guys, the word is to be interdependent. Oh, my God. What I, you know what I hear? It should be 50-50. 
Always. <laughs> we have to rely on each That's other. Right. There's not one in charge. And I said, it's not I a leader heard follower. More bullshit, dude. More making up words. None of that even means anything. <laughs> Interdependent. None of those words mean anything at all. But you seem like the smart one. You seem like the mature one because I could have a rational conversation. I could use big words that supposedly mean things in my mind. But if you don't even know what it means, you're stupid. Bitch, it makes no sense. Interdependent, that's not a real thing. That word maturity, I feel like I've never, I haven't used that word seriously in my everyday dialogue. It's the paradox. Again, those who are mature aren't using that word ever seriously. Right. I've never called, I don't remember calling someone mature or immature. It's like, yeah, I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. When did we start thinking knowledge is power? That stupid phrase. Where did that come from? Is that new? That sounds like a 90s thing to me. Could Knowledge be a spin-off. Knowledge is power. It sounds like whenever we college. It sounds like whenever we bring these terms that you're describing into play, Mitch, it sounds like there's already like an agenda at play to belittle someone. Yeah. There's an intent to belittle just once you have the mature, immature categories coming out your mouth. Wow. Sick. You're right ready off to the judge. Bat, by ready definition. To, you're oh, ready to judge. Hot. Yeah. And knowledge, too. The knowledge is power phrase. That's right. an immediate establishment of hierarchy, too. Because Aren't you saying knowledge you're, is you're, power? You're assuming right. that the other person's not powerful or right. stupid. Yeah. yeah. I'm That's, smarter than you. Therefore, I should have power over you by definition of my phrase that I just used. Because it definitely wasn't Socrates who said knowledge is power because he'll his <laughs> mindset was probably like, I don't care if you stay. Get the yeah, fuck out like, of here. None of those words make sense. You haven't right. defined them yet. It's all fake. You notice they'll use the words, but they won't define them. What the hell are you talking about? And it's a way to lure in people who should listen to you. It's yeah. like, whoa, knowledge is power? Does he have this power that I seek? <laughs> 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 is he the one who He's can so give me smart. this? Power, but Which usually it's like, no, I'm the powerful one. <laughs> Sounds like codependent and interdependent are the same are word, not man. The same it's word? the same word. You're making shit up. They're dependent on each other, codependent. <laughs> it's the same word. But here's a fun question: Does meritocracy always lead to authoritarianism? Man. Now think about it. We live in the freest country in the world, so they say, or how it was established. But freedom leads to be- Joe Biden being president. Yeah, that blew my mind when I was when I was uh, reviewing your your notes. Um, Think about it. Then we got Putin, we got Xi Jinping, and these guys earned their position. They rose through the ranks, but they live in a closed society. They live in a non-free society, but they have strong leaders that care about their nation. It's kind of funny how that works. It's like if you have a real leader, they know. Now, here's where I'm going with this. They know what is grace. I've been obsessed with this all week, if not for years now. What is grace really? I think there's only a few people. Socrates said it himself. Philosophers should be kings and kings should be philosophers. Hmm. If you can't have one without the other. And someone who actually knows what they're doing and rose through the ranks or actually knows a little bit of the world, they should be in charge. But if they, if they have rose through the ranks and they've seen the world... They know that most people cannot be trusted with freedom. That's the crazy paradox of it right. all. You know, you could have America that started under God and could be the freest nation on earth. But being so free, it degenerates over time through trickery and deceit. You have things propping each other up just mm, to exist. Isn't things, that th- funny? things don't exist out of necessity or out of out of good conclusions. Things exist because we have to make everybody feel good. We got to prop them up. Right. Yep. Yeah, through meritocracy, I think it's it so clearly separates who is the best and superior at everything. Right. That it's it's only natural for a bunch of inferiors to come together and be like, you know, this isn't fair. Right. To, we're to gonna, overthrow we're the guy who clearly should be right. in charge. You guys think that's interesting? Grass though? I mean, it's just like, is that always how it's cursed to be? Humanity for all, all time? Because if so. you deserve what you have, you know damn well. That most people don't deserve what you have because you did it. That, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's one of uh, Bill Gates' first like nouns in his like description of who he is. Philanthropist, billionaire, uh, tech. How are you gonna Microsoft call yourself founder? a philanthropist? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I can't. Well, he creates charities and people like him. They create charities. Yeah, and then they donate to it. Yeah, yeah. And just <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> right back to his pocket. Let's yeah. go back to another one of the ancients. 
but this time we're gonna take it to the east. With your favorite, Mitch translates the Dow. Mitch translates the Dow. Chapter 14. We look at it and do not see. We call it invisible. We look for it and do not hear. We call it inaudible. We reach for it and do not grasp. We call it intangible. These three cannot be investigated Hence, they mix and act as one. Its top is not sparkling. Its bottom is not dark. It returns to nothing, so it has no name. Shapeless, formless, indistinguishable. We face it, but do not see its head. We follow it, but do not see its rear. Understand the ancient ways to master the present. To know the ancient beginning is to make sense of the Tao. This one, Lao Tzu just gave us a straight shout out from 2,500 years ago. Ancient wisdom. This show is Lao Tzu approved, (laughs) y'all. Understand the ancient ways to master the present. That's basically the big big finale there. Think about it. That's the opening of the show right there. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty cool. (laughs) Add some reverb to it. Understand the ancient ways. That's pretty sick. But yeah. That's what we're trying to get back to. And even then... There were ancient times In 2,500 <laughs> years ago, they were talking about ancient times. Oh, my God. They were like, it's too funny? modern I thought that now. that was the ancient <laughs> this is time. Like, oh my God, we have too much technology. The plow? <laughs> Domesticated animals? <laughs> Jesus, we've taken a the wrong carriage? turn at Albuquerque. God. And, you know, even they talk about in Egypt, right? Like... Uh, when, when when they made the Great Pyramid, did you know the Sphinx was already like hyper ancient? That shit's old. No, it's no. weird to think about. We think ancient Egypt. It's just a thing. Like Triangles maybe, maybe it's ten yet. years. Yeah, <laughs> but no, ancient Egypt was thousands of years. Triangles, shapeless, formless, indistinguishable. It sounds like it's saying that the senses. Um, all the senses combined or maybe even something greater oh. than the senses is what really senses it. oh deep the sixth sense <clears throat> right well even With though Bruce even though three is everything i guess and yeah yeah that's right. like, those are the senses not five you gotta put three. yourself in his head <laughs> i guess it'd be weird to say taste it yeah yeah true or touch it the ten thousand things I like when they say ancient ways because it almost seems like uh, simple ways. The way this is written, you know, you have to see it as sort of a puzzle, as so, as some sort of equation, some kind of ancient text. It's the simple ways. What would be not of the senses? What would be not visible, shapeless, formless, indistinguishable? It's it's sort of the simple ways. We didn't have all this modern technology like plows and domesticated animals and fences. We didn't need it. Mm. And we have clues to what the ancient wisdom is. It doesn't even tell us what it is, but there's clues that kind of lead to it. I almost want to say that Lao Tzu is kind of hinting that are trying to almost prove the existence of God, mm. but it, it'll it'll never be something that you can prove to someone in the physical. It really is all internal, right? In the spiritual realm, the sixth sense. Um, For sure. But but the 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 Chinese culture is just so so much more ancient than the West that it had it really had a lot of time and millennia to just go deeper into what God is and what our idea of of God is. Mm, And as Nietzsche said, it was like, uh, they didn't need a God sort of at the time, especially like the Buddhism, uh, you know, I I would loop Taoism in there with it, of course, but it's just like, they sort of had already evolved beyond the need for a God, he says. And that feels very real because all you could do, my favorite line from, 
the, the Zen tradition is the finger pointing at the moon. You cannot say it. You can only point at it. You can only describe it. You can only be it, perhaps. Whoa. That, maybe that's saying too much. I think maybe this ties back to the language, like mature and stuff like uh-huh. that. Because by defining something as God, it's like, you think you know what God is by mm. saying the word God because you're you're taking an, uh, uh, an intangible concept and giving it a... Uh, humanistic trait almost by uh, objectifying God as a word. I love to to bring up the golden calf always. Moses was like, I was gone for two minutes! And y'all, his brother made the golden calf for someone to worship. He's like, well, Moses is dead. He's been gone for a day. Uh, This is our new God now. It's this golden calf. (laughs) It's our thing now. I was gone for two minutes! Wow, it, you really think... When How you, quickly yeah. humanity will turn on you and your God that you so-called uh, supposedly worship. When you break it down in that way, it almost makes sense why um, God God uh, punished them. Oh, oh, yes, that's right. He, 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 they were no longer his people. They, they, they fell into uh, uh, sin too often they they idolized like they did and it's the, mm. the same tribe of of judah today is not the same tribe damn ephemeral then. and it's the death of meritocracy yet again and it's like moses knew that think about how moses felt coming down from the mountain he's like i got the laws guys i, I got it what i said i was gonna get and they're all like they're like naked. You catch them in bed or something like that. <laughs> oh, like, oh, I thought you were dead. Sorry. And bro, think about what Moses felt. Meritocracy is dead. Mm. He was the only guy to have any real faith. And, and they betrayed him so fast. And he knows. He's like, well, guess I can't trust these guys. For all I know, that's the reason he made the Ten Commandments. Or was given by God, whatever you want to believe. Yeah, that that I, he's like these guys are idiots. They need some ground rules. You almost feel bad for Moses, like his his despair when he came down from the mountain to see all of his brothers and sisters, yeah, uh, falling from grace like this. Like, thought you're the chosen away. people. Yeah, God. I just saved you from <laughs> enslavement. Coach, yeah, like, like we're taking you, you to the promised land, and God, you we're forgot. The chosen people, right? Like you're going to the land of milk and honey. Yeah, and you forgot. Well, I don't know if they knew that they were going oh, there. True. They're just lost in the desert. That's what it is. You're in the desert. You're like, oh, this sucks. I should have just been a slave still. <laughs> think guess. about think about where wow. their head's at, too. They're yeah. like, I, they're mad at Moses at this point. They're like, guys, I would rather be a slave. At least I had food. If Lao Tzu was to write an advertisement for the Tao, it would be this Tao. Oh, tight. Because he's like saying, that. he's saying all this confusion you have, the three things, whatever, invisible, inaudible, intangible, that's all the same. It's all mm. confusing. I get it. I'm Lao Tzu. I've been there. <laughs> I get it, man. I get it. The top is not sparkling and the bottom is dark. It's hard. It's man. hard out there. <laughs> right? But if you read my book, <laughs> you will get the ancient wisdom and figure He's it out. <laughs> He's selling his That's what I this hear. This is the advertisement. This is Lao Tzu's You're advertisement. Buy, Lao Tzu, buy the Tao. Lao Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> Three scrolls. <laughs> Three scrolls for one good price. That's, right. That's all I got for today, guys. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you learned what ephemeral is. Congratulations to Poge for the hot takes today. Woo! Oh, what do we got? That was what a am good I winning? Spin. You get his advice. Oh, nice. I'm excited. <laughs> this is the first one we've done. That's right. Let me turn get the confetti off. Get serious. Mm. Never look back. <laughs> I hope are you, you learned a are thing. Are you inspired, Poge? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling have like. You, have you learned a thing? Or I'm going to take this throughout my week. Boom. And carry it with me. Apply it to everything. You'll be success. Break the conditioning and return to ancient wisdom. <laughs>